So adaptive cruise control is the next generation of cruise control. Uh, besides setting your set speed, it allows you to set a gap and it will maintain that gap to the vehicle in front. Adaptive cruise control um, uses a radar sensor to uh, look at the, the road ahead and it, it measures the distance and the, the change in speed of the vehicle ahead. So it's able to adjust your speed, the vehicle speed you're in to the, the vehicle ahead. The benefits of adaptive cruise control to the driver is it's able to um, provide more comfort and convenience to the driver. Um, most people are familiar with standard cruise control, uh, but if the vehicle in front of you starts to go at slower speed, you have to, you have to turn that off. With adaptive cruise control, it does just what it says. It adapts to the speed of the vehicle ahead, and that way it's uh, just a more comfortable convenience, longer term use. I mean, the, the, the driver just gets a lot more enjoyment. We're here at the Michigan Proving Grounds and we're studying how adaptive cruise control vehicles may positively influence traffic flow. What we were looking at is the causes of stop and go traffic. Essentially, humans create it. Um, you have lane changes, you drive a little bit uh, more aggressively or you're distracted, and when the traffic conditions are right, those small mistakes in your driving behavior get amplified by the vehicles behind, and pretty soon you have stop and go driving that seems to appear out of nowhere. That traffic appearing from nowhere we call a phantom traffic jam. And our thought was that as technologies get added into the vehicles that change the way they drive, we might be able to use those uh, technologies to smooth out those phantom traffic jams or those stop and go traffic jams. Here at the Michigan Proving Grounds, we ran a different set of experiments where we had 36 adaptive cruise control vehicles simulating realistic freeway traffic. As the traffic evolved, we created a disturbance that could be caused from somebody cutting you off in, in front of traffic. And that creates a stop and go wave that human drivers have to respond to. Uh, and in the experiments we saw, again, that wave uh, was created. And when we turned on the adaptive cruise control uh, vehicles, uh, those waves actually were amplified less and in some cases actually dissipated uh, when those adaptive cruise control vehicles were engaged. In terms of the traffic flow, these phantom traffic jams, they look like an accordion. You see all the vehicles compressed together as they slow down and respond to the disturbance ahead and then they speed back up. And when the adaptive cruise control vehicles were enabled, actually they kept a nice spacing between the vehicles and they were able to maintain a constant or near constant speed. And that has a big impact not only in terms of driver comfort, but also in terms of the fuel consumption that is consumed as you uh, have to engage in heavy braking and then acceleration again. So these technologies uh, really open up the possibility of also reducing fuel consumption caused by these phantom traffic jams. Uh, what we saw was really important. It's a first of its kind experiment. It shows that current technology that is available on cars today uh, can outperform human drivers when we're distracted, when we're thinking about other things. And it shows sort of the pathway to the future where these technologies might become better able to see ahead, better able to respond to the traffic disturbances and make everyone's commute better. Yeah, so what we saw here today was really the potential for adaptive cruise control systems to outperform human drivers. And the next generation technologies that have adaptive cruise controls that can see further than the vehicle ahead or that can talk to other cars in the traffic flow will enable even better performance in terms of the traffic flow and the ability to smooth out stop and go traffic jams. When the technology works well, you won't notice stop and go traffic any longer. Those types of jams won't get triggered because these vehicles are continuously adapting to the flow ahead and eliminating these disturbances from propagating into full-blown stop and go traffic jams. So you'll be driving in your commute. It may be dense traffic, but it's smooth flowing. There's no incentive to change lanes because everybody's moving at the same speed. These vehicles act essentially as pace vehicles, keeping the flow moving smoothly uh, and at high speeds. As we think about how these technologies are deployed, the critical question from the traffic engineering uh, point of view is how this will influence the overall flow. And so what we are seeing is the possibility that these technologies might not just be good for driver comfort or driver assisting uh, technologies, but really get to the point where these vehicles actually improve everyone's commute, uh, even those vehicles that don't have adaptive cruise control systems engaged. I think there's several things that were really surprising about the test. First and foremost was the fact that there are scenarios in which human drivers are making mistakes, create traffic jams that today's technologies can eliminate. 
So it really opens the stage for designing the next generation of technologies that can see further ahead than just the vehicle ahead and really start performing at the same level of the best human drivers that anticipate the traffic ahead. Working with Ford has been fantastic because on a research scale, the types of questions we can answer are just so much bigger. I mean, this was a test that involved 36 cars, drivers, food, a test track, and having Ford's expertise to help build out this test and really get the fundamental questions answered at scale with real vehicles in a safe environment, this was something that uh, I was really thankful to have the opportunity to work on.